Welcome back. Uh, we're in week two, uh, and we're really looking at uh, segment three of our learning outcomes this week. Um, this short video lecture that I'm going to uh, offer is focused on um, two elements. One, uh, I want to share with you um, the Indigenous land acknowledgement that is part of the the fabric of Centennial College and where it came from. And I also want to share with you not a not an alternate version of um, Canadian history, but a, a historical perspective that we really do not share. Uh, because for most of my life, pretty much all of it, uh, and for generations before me, it was suppressed because the indigenous culture uh, was suppressed in this country. Um, and that's what I want to share with you, that history uh, and uh, the challenges uh, that the uh, indigenous communities across the country, who are many, have faced uh, ever since, as uh, they refer to us as settlers, uh, ever since uh, people from that weren't here at the beginning, uh, the settlers arrived on the shores of North America. So uh, I'm going to uh, share with you a presentation that um, sort of introduces you to the political nature of this. So uh, this particular uh, image is a, a piece of art. It was uh, created by uh, Lawrence Paul, who is both uh, an artist, an Indigenous uh, First Nations artist uh, and activist. And you can tell um, not only is he using the traditional imagery of the West Coast Indigenous peoples, but it is full of um, really political uh, uh, material calling out uh, activities from the Nation to Nation book on this guy's chest to uh, somebody who refers to this as Indian country, which is the term Indian is the term that pretty much everyone in North America re referred to indigenous people as Indians. Um, this is not an acceptable term any longer. Uh, so I'm going to uh, talk to you today about uh, the process of how this came to be, this idea of land and whose land is it. So this is Centennial's land acknowledgement of traditional land. So it says, Centennial is proud to be part of a rich history of education in this province and in this city. We acknowledge that we are on the treaty lands and territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation and pay tribute to their legacy and the legacy of all First Peoples of Canada as we strengthen ties with the communities we serve and build the future through learning and through our graduates. Today, the traditional meeting place of Toronto is still home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the communities that have grown in the treaty lands of the Mississaugas. We acknowledge that we are all treaty people and accept our responsibilities to honor all our relations. Very formal acknowledgement of whose land uh, Centennial sits on and as you'll see, most of the city of Toronto. So you saw a reference to Turtle Island. So Turtle Island is, um, is an indigenous um, term for North America. You can look at the image uh, on the right of your screen and you can see North America and you can see um, where we're situated, which is right here. But this is where Turtle Island came from in the oral traditions of indigenous peoples across the, uh, across the country. On the left, you see imagery of uh, traditional um, indigenous uh, creation image. So Turtle Island is the sort of foundation of this. 
the, the land part of it, you would see almost always a woman, and in fact a pregnant woman, that is part of uh, this connection to the, the air and the sea and all of the elements of nature. So it's a very connected piece, and it's a very connected uh, cultural tradition within, um, within the indigenous communities. So let's just step back for a minute and look at uh, how uh, we got here and what we're really talking about. So if you look on the right, you will see with those red dots, the migration of European settlers from England, Ireland, France, Germany, Spain, Portugal, Italy, uh, coming and settling in North America. They also settled in South America, uh, although this uh, map is not particularly described that, and they encountered the same indigenous people in that part of, uh, uh, of, of the world. But this is what happened. These are where the settlements happened, where you see the traditional part of Quebec and uh, in the uh, New England states down into uh, South, uh, South Carolina and Virginia. And then the Spanish settlements in Florida and uh, in the center part of, uh, of, of, America, of the American South. And uh, then on the far west coast, these again are Spanish settlements in California. Um, so you can see in this inset map the different sort of ethnic groups, English settlements, French settlements, Spanish settlements. Uh, this is how settlers came. They encountered many different uh, indigenous tribes. Uh, but, you know, uh, even then, uh, and probably more so then, saw them as inferior. And this is a common theme that we see throughout uh, the process. This map zeroes in in so southern Ontario and northern Ontario. So we're sitting here in Toronto um, in the 1600s before and just as the Europeans were arriving, there were three large First Nation groups. They had been in conflict. Uh, the Ashnabi, or human beings, are the Red Group, uh, the Wyandotte people, uh, the Huron Nation, uh, the Haudenosaunee, or the, uh, the Iroquois Confederacy, also referred to as the Five Nations, would be in the south in what is today present-day New York State and Pennsylvania. So going back to this idea of nation states, these indigenous groups, tribes, had carved out their own area. And they had, in, for years, went back and forth fighting with one another. Uh, so it wasn't as if um, the, the Europeans arrived to everyone happily getting along, but this is what it looked like back then. You can see uh, the Ishnabi, the human beings in the Mississaugas of New Credit, their land is where we are today. So what happened? Um, the settlement started and the concept of a treaty came into being. So a treaty would be say, well, you know, we're going to, we want this land so what would you take in exchange for it? So it's bartering for land. Again, not something that uh, the indigenous people really understood at the same level because they thought land was to be shared. They didn't think of it being owned. Um, but these were the kind of treaties that were created throughout all this time and really up for a long time afterwards. In the 1760s, something in Europe was going on called the Seven Years' War between England and France. This carried over into uh, the early 1760s into uh, a culminating battle in Quebec City uh, that resulted in the French really being uh, expunged from uh, 
North America, uh, leaving a very large settlement group in Quebec and New Brunswick. Um, and But it was the English that had dominance over uh, North America at this time, 1760s. But it was very short-lived because to the south, the 13 U.S. colonies only 16 years later rose up against England and the American Revolution took place. That uh, revolution resulted in the creation of the United States of America. Uh, we see another event between um, the United States, Britain, and Canada in the War of 1812, uh, where Canada and the U.S. fought their only war was mostly British, Indigenous, and uh, Canadian settlers fighting the American army. Uh, they were repelled. Um, a long period of time came uh, in 1867, after a long period of colonization by the British, we see these lovely group of men sitting here. This guy here is our first prime minister, John A. Macdonald. Um, and Confederation, or Canada as we know today, was born in 1867. These guys, you know, they look like they could be uh, great leaders, and they did have a vision of what Canada was supposed to be. As we'll see, it did not include Indigenous people. In 1876, the Indian Act was created, and at this point, we see the beginnings of what is really a system of cultural genocide. Basically, uh, it was the elimination of uh, indigenous peoples by suppressing everything about their culture, their language, their way of life, their dress. Everything that you see was taken away from them. And in this period of time that lasted for an incredible length of time, from the 1870s all the way to 2008, was the creation of what people refer to as residential schools. And residential schools basically took away children from their families, placed them in uh, residential schools that were run by the government, most often supervised by religious groups like the Catholic Church, the Anglican Church. Um, and this is what happened. People, young people that look like that were made to look like this. Everybody was turned to be what the Europeans believed would be um, what they thought were civilized people. They stole their history. They stole their culture. They stole their way of life. So you can imagine what would happen over a period of time when that takes place. If we look at the treaties that were signed, Indigenous people have an oral tradition. They don't have a written tradition as the Europeans did. So Europeans love to write everything down, put it on a piece of paper. As you can see, this map on the left, Shows, uh, shows Toronto, shows York, Vaughan, King, even Scarborough, not spelled correctly. Um, but this map was uh, what was described as a tract of land, and it was sold to Upper Canada, which was a colony uh, before Canada was born, for 10 shillings, or the equivalent of $60 today. Um, as time went on, finally, the, uh, uh, the Mississaugas of New Credit uh, challenged this, and in a court settlement in 1986, they were awarded a $146 million settlement for this land that was sold for basically a pittance uh, back in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the 1800s. So some key things to think about here. Um, this indigenous word, it's a noun that we use to describe First Nations, people that uh, self-identify as Métis and Inuit people. You should be specific about the nation you're referencing. So indigenous people can be used to reference the first peoples of other countries. 
First Nations is a replacement for the word Indian, as is Inuit is a replacement for the word Eskimo. Uh, the Mississaugas of Credit First Nation is both a reserve in Ontario and a group within the Anishinaabe Nation. It's important for you to know that there are 600 independent First Nations across Canada and 133 independent uh, First Nations or tribes across Ontario. Um, so it's, it's a, a large group, approximately 600,000 people. <coughs> Centennial has adopted an Indigenous strategic framework based on um, the results of the Truth and, and Reconciliation Commission. Uh, and what we're doing here today is really about Indigenous learning uh, for our students, you, to have a different perspective on, on what's happened in our history. Um, I'd like to end the presentation with, again, some imagery. This, um, this artist's name is Kent Monkman. He is a very realistic, very activist um, Indigenous painter. Uh, this, this describes what happened uh, and what continued to happen for centuries, oh, more than a century, to Indigenous people. Children being ripped away from their parents, taken away by authority, the church, identified here by nuns and priests, and by the wonderfully iconic uh, the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in their beautiful red serge jackets. A uh, very haunting image. Uh, and I, I also want to, uh, I'm just going to end by um, talking to you, uh, or, or showing to you rather, uh, another piece of art. This uh, this piece is called The Wisdom of the Universe. It's by an artist by the name of Christy Belcourt. Uh, she is a Métis artist. Um, it's a, it just is, it reflects uh, culture. It reflects an expression of culture that's very connected to the universe, to nature, to the environment. Um, these are the kinds of, uh, touchstones of indigenous culture that have been eliminated over time. They are also the reason that we have had such um, a tremendous disconnect from the indigenous population in, in that for generations, indigenous people who were subject to the residential school system have suffered irreparable damage and by that I mean generational damage um, that will take uh, decades uh, to uh, assuage, to rectify, uh, so that we can go forward as a, as a nation. So uh, I'm going to leave you uh, here. Uh, I will be posting some more information for you to consider um, for our discussion board. Uh, uh, but thanks for um, watching this, and I, I look forward to uh, your questions and discussions uh, in the discussion board, but also in our Zoom conference this week.